In relation to HIV, what we're seeing now is because the advent of uh, the treatments in 1996 and treatment is so good for people living with HIV, we've now got people living into the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s and we're looking at near lifelong expectancy now for somebody with HIV to compare to somebody who's not got HIV. So we've got the challenges of providing HIV care for people who are getting older and making sure there's relevant old people services available for people who are in the 60s or 70s. But we are seeing an increase in people over 50s either getting diagnosed with HIV or getting infected. For the ones that are diagnosed, you know, they may have been living with the virus for 10 years or so before they get diagnosed, they become unwell, they're diagnosed. So they may have got infected in the late 30s, in the 40s. But also we do know that a number of people are now getting infected in the 50s, 60s and 70s and that can be a change from they may have been in a relationship for 20 or 30 years, that relationship's now come to an end, they've met new partners, they're having sex with them and around that is actually they're not used to using condoms. If you think back 30 years, condoms were probably we use from their point of view more as birth control as a form of contraception. And it may be if a woman's gone through the menopause, she doesn't need to use a condom because she's not going to get pregnant. Whereas actually, it's a bad to think about protecting yourself from sexually transmitted infections. And the way the dating scene's changed as well with the advent of internet dating, speed dating like that, it's a lot easier for people to meet, uh, meet up, start relationships. So it's looking at you know it's very different approach to 10, 20 years ago. But also it shows we've not got the message across to older people from 50 up to 80 around sexual health and need to make sure the services are appropriate for them to access.